There's already some good videos out there showing you how to make a miter sled for your table saw, but I currently don't have one at the moment, so I figured I'd take this opportunity to show you my approach to a miter sled for your table saw. Now the benefit of using a table saw as opposed to a miter saw to cut all of your miters is that it's incredibly accurate and there's absolutely zero setup time. Once this thing is completed, you're gonna be referencing off of a perfect 90 degree corner. So no matter what you cut on this side, if it is not exactly 45 degrees, whatever the difference is, it will be compensated for on this side. 100% of this jig will come from this piece of plywood, which means the runners are gonna be plywood as well. So making sure not to mess with my square corner, I'm gonna rip 7 eighths of an inch off of this side and off the bottom side as well. When it comes to making the runners for any table saw jig, for years I've just ran my pieces through the table saw and bumped the fence over repeatedly until I get a nice snug fit. Sometimes that worked great, most of the time it was a big pain in the butt to do. So this time I've ran a scrap piece of plywood through that is the same 7 8 of an inch width as my runners that I'm about to cut. I can use a cheap pair of calipers to measure the width, the exact width that I'm at currently subtract the exact width of the miter slot and that'll tell me exactly how far I need to move the fence. And to figure out how far I actually am moving the fence, I've got one of these cheap magnetic bases with a uh, dial indicator. Now all of this stuff is just cheap Harbor Freight stuff, but it will work out pretty well. And I can set this on the other side of the fence and it'll tell me exactly how far I am moving the fence to make my adjustment. I'm gonna go ahead and get these cut and then we'll work on the sled. Now keep in mind that these tools aren't 100% necessary, but they will save you a bunch of headache and you can use them in a lot of places in your wood shop. Our runners are a little bit snug, but it's extremely humid outside. It's actually raining. So I'm going to leave them as is and not trim them down any, anymore. I'm using half inch plywood. So the height is just a little bit more than what it needs to be. The depth of my miter slot is about three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna trim these down to a height that is slightly less than three eighths of an inch. Essentially what we're gonna do is cut this 90 degree corner into a 90 degree triangle and flip it onto the rest of the sled. Now, first we need to figure out how much material we need to cut off and what size pieces are we going to be typically cutting. I don't ever see myself mitering a frame that's more than four or five inches. So I'm gonna add an inch to that and say six inches will be perfectly safe and it'll also allow me a little bit more support up here to catch the off cuts. So what I'm gonna do is with the 90 degree corner facing me, I'm gonna come in six inches from this side, six inches from this side, strike a line in between the two points and cut that off. With the runners and the table saw, I can position the base. And basically I have the corner of it up against the fence over here, the corner where the kerf is gonna be, and an approximate 45 degrees off the fence. This stage isn't too critical. But I can mark the position on my runners, apply some glue, and glue this thing down. started storming pretty bad, so I went home and let it sit overnight. I'm really happy with the way that this slides, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut my kerf real quick about halfway through, and then also cut off the excess for my runners. The triangle that we cut off that has the exact 90 degree corner, we're just going to flip it back on top of the sled and we're gonna position it so that the point is in line with the kerf and the back two edges are lining up. 
and then I can use my 12 inch speed square or any other type of speed square that you have to verify that this is that this line is 45 degrees off of the fence and I'm just going to pre-drill and screw this down in a couple spots before I call this complete I want to make a few thumb holes and that is so that my hand can act as a clamp to hold the workpiece wherever it is needed and that will hopefully reduce the tendency to, for this to want to slide if I'm clamping it down I'm going to do this on both sides and I'm just going to use this as a spacer real quick Again, the benefit of using this sled on your table saw as opposed to your miter saw to cut your 45 degree miters is speed and accuracy. So long as this triangle on the back is already 90 degrees, then no matter what you do on the right side, as long as you match it up with a left hand cut, these two angles will be exactly 90 degrees. Even if this triangle is skewed just a little bit one way, it will match this exact same corner. This particular sled is absolutely perfect if you're making picture frames or any other type of flat stock 45 degree cuts. What it's not good for is if you're taking that flat stock and putting it on end. If you're making say a 45 degree uh, mitered corner for a box. It's not that good obviously because of the depth of cut and also for stability. If you're wanting to make a 45 degree cut in a panel such as this, it would be best to tilt the blade to 45 degrees and run it through a 45 degree cross cut sled. Well, I hope you're able to find this jig useful. The last miter sled that I had for my last table saw got a lot of use and I had it for a really long time. Remember that this only took a two foot by two foot piece of half inch plywood to make 100% the entire jig, uh, including the runners. So if you don't have scrap plywood laying around, then it's also an expensive jig to make. If this is your first time watching, I'd love to have you subscribe. I post a new woodworking video pretty much once a week, and whenever possible, I always have free downloadable plans on my website. Also, if you're into the social media thing, check out my Facebook page where I post a lot of current and future project updates throughout the week. And it's always fun interacting with all of you over there on Facebook already and sharing all of your ideas and completed projects as well. Thanks for watching and have a great day.